So let's get into this game number one between Riley and Justin. Riley going to be leading with the Whipsicon and the Iron Crown. And for Justin, you've got the Thunderous and Zamazenta. Importantly, the Zamazenta, because it doesn't have the uh, Iron Defense like you pointed out, Rose, if it switches out, it will no longer have the Defense Boost from the Dauntless Shield ability. It only activates once per battle now in Scarlet and Violet. So if that does leave the field and come back in, it will not have a boosted body press. But the Iron Crown in the Whimsicott on Riley's side will be looking to match the offense put out by the Thunderous and the Zamazenta. But the Thunderous here are actually in a pretty good spot because Eerie Impulse, a very strong movement to two special attackers. It is. I mean, you're gonna Three. love to be, yeah. <laughs> Three I mean, yeah. <laughs> Hello, Maraidon. It's so useful to be able to have against this entire team. And it's going to be important to see if you can actually weave those in. Maybe force Riley to have to make some pivots he might not necessarily want to. But it's time for terrestrialization. So just with what's on the field, that has to be the Iron Crown. With that Expert Belt, no less. So anything that's going to be super effective is going to be able to be amplified even further. And that's the ground Terra. And it has Terra Blast too. We could see a big Terra Blast coming through, but Eerie Impulse will lower the special attack of that Iron Crown by two stages right off the bat. Yep, that's exactly how that works. It is a, <laughs> <laughs> it is a, it was an electric type attack into a ground type Pokemon. That's where I was going with that. <laughs> Sorry. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's just funny that that's the mechanic. So right. using an electric type attack into a ground type Pokemon. True. Yeah, just, I think some status moves kind of bypass that type interaction. But a really impactful area impulse there, too, because that Zamazenta took less than half. And now Maridon on Riley's side also took a big body press coming in. Of course, Thunderous cannot paralyze a Maridon because electric types are immune to paralysis. So there's no possible speed control here, and Maridon should be able to act first. Of course, can get Eerie Impulse. Again, as we've learned, nothing is immune to Eerie Impulse. Uh, but at the same time, you're still a Choice Specs Maridon in electric terrain. Even a minus two, like Electro Drift or Volt Switch, might be enough to finish off the Zamazenta after that Terra Blast. Well, the Iron Crown doesn't want to stay in in the face of something like the Zamazenta, or and also you just got to shed those drops. So it's going to be the Incineroar now that takes the field. It'll lower the Zamazenta's attack and see what else it can get done. It's We're, time for another Terra. It sure is. Most likely the Zamazenta, which should allow it to resist any electric type attacks coming out from this Maridon as it turns into a grass type. Very common Terra type on Zamazenta allows you to kind of ignore Amoongus, which is very, very helpful when you're using a Pokemon like Zamazenta. Eerie Impulse does come out here lowering minus two special attack because that is how that move works. And no, it is how that works. <laughs> an electric type into an electric type. It works too, but yeah, the Volt Switch. So super nice to know that even though it is going to get Eerie Impulse, it's going to shed those drops immediately. Take a look at how well that Zamazenta did take that with that Grass Terra, as you called out. You have to wonder if like the, the Eerie Impulse and Terra was a bit of overkill there. Like maybe you could have possibly preserved that Terra for later on. But at the same time, even at like a minus two, if, if Riley had gone for like a terrestrialization, you can't terrestrialize, I guess, but even like Electro Drift at minus two, maybe was still enough. So it's just covering for all your options there, right? You're gonna get, be able to get a body press off on this turn. If Justin opted to body press the Iron Crown, actually a really big deal here because the Incineroar did swap in. Winsicott will take Maridon's place and now Zamazenta gets to act. Zamazenta goes for no! the body press into the Incineroar. It's oh. not quite enough for the one hit knockout, but it is going to take the Incineroar down so low. Threatening fake out though on this next turn. Does threaten fake out, but thankfully the Thunderous is holding that lovely Covert Cloak item, so it cannot be flinched. You do have the option to finish it off with a Thunderbolt. Your Zamazenta should be able to survive one Moon Blast from Whimsicott, I would imagine. Still a pretty bulky Pokemon and is neutral, even after that Trastalization. And Heavy Slam, pretty big threat into Whimsicott as well. But Zamazenta, again, it's kind of one of those things when you're not running Iron Defense, it's really nice to keep it on the field as long as possible because you will not have the option to boost your defense again afterwards. Yeah, I think you just have to keep the Zamacenta on the field, and one of the things that it can do best is sit there. Yeah, But surely. just keep kind of wailing away on its opponent to the body press or just a heavy slam. So it's going to eat the fake out this time around. But the Eerie Impulse into the Whimsicott is going to be able to lower that special attack for the Moon Blast. So if you weren't convinced it might survive before, it might now, and this Zamacenta sure will too. And it should survive one more too. We saw it do 22 damage with that Moon Blast which should be more than enough for Zamazenta to stick around. 
fire off another big body press into that Incineroar slot if it wants, because nothing that switches in, or nothing that could switch in, would resist it at all. And I think anything that switches in also would probably get knocked out. The Iron Crown and the Maridon both pretty low, and now Riley's options are pretty limited. Whimsicott being the only very healthy Pokemon, it's nice because you have the Focus Ash and Tech still, but Whimsicott, especially at minus two special attack, really not known for its offense. No, it's not. I mean, we have seen maybe a couple big Moonblasts before, but <laughs> it's still a tough call. This Incineroar also maybe worth calling out that it is a four-move set, so it has the Assault Vest. Yep. So it does have access to Flare Blitz, Fake Out U-Turn, and Knock Off. Wondering if the U-turn might be important here if you're trying to get that super effective damage down into the Samacenta, but you're not going to be able to land it anyway because of that Protect. Whimsicott going to go for the Tailwind, able to get this speed control up and running. And because it's just a naturally faster Pokemon, it's able to get that up before you see this taunt come through from the Thunderous. Flare Blitz will go into the Protect of that Zamazenta, even with the defense boost at this point, would be more than enough damage. And based on how this Incineroar was trained, it's likely that it could outspeed this Zamazenta, because it is a Dark type. You cannot paralyze it with the Prankster Thunder Wave, as Dark types are immune. So this Zamazenta now no longer in a position where it's kind of free to just go for any attack it might want. Based on how either of them are trained, it's still very possible that Zamazenta outspeeds this Incineroar. And of course, we saw the Moonblast do very little damage before. So if Incineroar is faster than Zamazenta, then Riley's in a great spot. If it's not, then Justin has to uh, like basically just pick whatever he wants to get knocked out in that slot. Ooh, well, the Whipscott's going to leave the field. With its Focus Sash intact, which could be very important later on in the game, and the Iron Crown now going to take its place. It's gonna get its Quirk Drive activated too, so in case you missed it, it's gonna be a special attack boost for the Body Press, able to finish off this Incineroar. And importantly, Zamazenta is still outspeeding Incineroar in Tailwind. Really nice info for both of these trainers because that could have been a big momentum swing in Riley's favor if the Incineroar, Incineroar was able to act first and KO Zamazenta. Thunderbolt will go fly into the ground type Iron Crown and do no damage because it is immune. But now we are in a position where Justin has a Pokemon advantage. Not only that, has done a lot of damage to both the Iron Crown and the Maridon on Riley's side and hasn't even revealed his third or fourth Pokemon. Yeah, I mean, that's just impressive, honestly. Yeah. This Thunderous and Zamazet just sticking around for so long and also able to secure a KO before you reveal anything else. Great timing, though, by Riley. Waited for that electric terrain to expire and then comes back in with the Maridon to reactivate it right away. And of course, the Tailwind is up on Riley's side. Speed advantage is secured, and neither Pokemon on Riley's side can be affected by Thunder Wave. Maridon being electric type and Iron Crown being a ground type, neither of which Thunder Wave can connect with. And I, I, th I actually thought Iron Crown took some damage earlier on, but it is still at full health and in a pretty good position. Those Tachyon Cutters and the Psychic Noise might be able to make a big impact here thanks to that Quark Drive special attack boost. Feels good too, because even if you do get that special attack dropped by something like an Eerie Impulse, I don't think you mind. You don't mind? And, like only one can be dropped at a time. Like yeah. both of them are at neutral pick, now. <laughs> pick your poison. You just have to pick, exactly. So it will be a very tough one to consider, but Riley's just gonna play it safe. Wants to protect this Iron Crown for now. Oh, but Ooh. it is gonna be the Maridon that is the key target. So this protect might be for nothing here if this Maridon is not able to do enough damage because it's a discharge. Iron Crown would have taken that anyway because it's that ground oh, it survives. Type, and it survives too. That area oh. pulse is so important to make sure that the Zamazenta actually stuck around. That would have been so much more impactful if Justin had opted to target that Maridon with the body press though. Now that the discharge did like slightly over half of Zamazenta's remaining HP, I think even one more area impulse wouldn't be able to protect it from that discharge, which means that Iron Crown and Maridon will should be able to both attack this turn. And discharge can pick off Zamazenta, do some damage with Thunder. Thunderous, Iron Crown can then swing at Thunderous as well. Both at minus two, maybe Thunderous sticks around one more turn, but this is actually a much more strong spot for Riley now because even though his Pokemon are threatened by that Eerie Impulse, both being special attackers, Justin doesn't have a great chance to attack right now thanks to the Tailwind from Whimsicott. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's also going to be Choice Specs too that helps to just boost up some of that damage. So you're mitigating it even just a little bit with just that item choice. This Thunder is still sticking around, means that it can land an Eerie Impulse into this Iron Crown. So that damage is going to be limited in just a little bit. But see that Ground Terror coming in clutch. And the Zamazenta cannot withstand another discharge from that Maridon. So finally, <laughs> how many turns into this game are we? And this Zamazenta is just knocked out. And how many Eerie Impulses has this Thunderous used? I think it's been on the turn for, on the field for maybe six or seven turns. And all 
but once as Eerie Impulse. So a lot of special attack drops coming through here, but finally KO'd and Riley has the option to switch out one of his two Pokemon, reset those special attack drops, and try to get some big damage going later on in this game. This ground terror has been really cool because not only is it great offensively, you know, Steel and Psychic have a hard time hitting opposing Steel types, and ground gives you something to do that. Also scares away some, some fire types you might be seeing along the way, but also it allows you to discharge next to your Iron Crown, not worry about damaging it, not worrying about para paralyzing it, and it gives you so much more flexibility here on this Choice Specs on team. Well, that Eerie Impulse is definitely going to hurt now because this Maridon did just lose access to Electric Terrain, so this Hadron Engine has been shut down for now, unless Riley Vectora wants to actually switch this Maridon off the field and bring the Whimsicott in, which is still full health. Yes. Importantly, though, the Maridon is pretty low, and one Sucker Punch from this Jiren Pao should be able to KO it. Grassy Glide, maybe not, just because it still does resist those Grass-type moves with that Dragon typing. But Iron Crown now is facing the detriments of becoming a Ground type, as it now becomes weak to this Rillaboom's Grass-type attacks. With that Miracle Seed item that we are seeing on the Rillaboom, those Grass-type attacks will be even further boosted in terms of their damage, which is a really big deal for this Iron Crown. Maridon, though, might be the last Bastion for this game one for Riley. So it goes back into its Pokeball and Whimsicott with that Focus Sash able to withstand this Icicle Crash that comes into that slot instead. The Tachyon Cutter though, it's gonna be a double hit from this move and a knockout onto this Chien Pao. Nice way to bypass that Focus Sash and just get a clean KO. That's exactly why you would still run Tachyon Cutter on the Iron Crown instead of something like Flash Cannon. Flash Cannon is 100% accurate, it will never miss, but Tachyon Cutter allows you to KO Chien Pao through that Focus Slash, which is a really big deal now. The Maridon can come back in, reset the electric terrain, and make sure that the Grassy Glide from this Rillaboom will not be doing super effective damage. You've also reset your special attack drops. Iron Crown still is at minus two and was able to KO the Chan Pao through that, which is really impressive. Uh, but we have the Maridon hitting the field once again with some very strong Dragon Pulses at its disposal. And again, you can't miss Dragon Pulse now, which is great, uh, especially yep. because this Rillaboom is not Assault Vest. You don't even really need Dragon Meteor at this point. No. <laughs> I don't think so. I think you're just super happy to know that you have the damage multipliers from Hadron Engine and just the general same type attack bonus being a Dragon type feels pretty good. And the Tachyon Cutter is able to go first. Rillaboom is still pretty oh, tanky, no. but the critical hit is potentially just going to seal the deal here yeah. for this Rillaboom as the Maridon goes for the Dragon Pulse and plenty of damage now to pick up that knockout and get Riley the win in game. But then we have booster energies that come in play. You know yeah. what? Things get funky. They sure do. a little bit funkier right now, shall <laughs> we? As we've got Riley and Justin in this game number two, with Riley leading the Maridon and the Incineroar, and Zava Sente Thunders once again for Justin. That Covert Cloak gonna come in really handy here because again, Incineroar cannot fake out this Thunderous because of Cloak. And so the minus two special attack from the ride from the Maridon is a very real possibility. Eerie Impulse here could be a great way to prevent that Maridon's damage. We saw a body press from Zamazenta actually not KO Incineroar with only the plus one defense boost. So that actually might give away this Incineroar is trained to be very, very bulky. Makes sense with the Assault Vest. Sometimes players have been opting for a very fast Incineroar, but Riley in this case saying, I don't really need that. Maybe not. This Thunderous was such a problem though for Riley. It extended the game so much longer and kind of forced Riley to have to make a lot of adjustments in order to just shed all of this drop. So you have to imagine that he's coming into this game number two, anticipating that it's going to be a strategy that Justin would want to lean on. But it's going to be a fake out into the Zamazenta, at least for now, as the Yuri Pulse moves first right after that. So Maridon not necessarily going to be able to deal out just as much damage, but you see the bolt switch. Another great play by Riley to anticipate that Eerie Impulse coming through. I feel like when people are running Choice Specs Maridon, Bolt Switch is the move they use 90% of the time, right? Like, it's such a great tool for positioning. But not only that, it does so much damage under some circumstances. Not in this one, obviously. <laughs> Minus two, facing a Grass-type <laughs> Zamazenta that is naturally very bulky and now resists your Electro-type attacks. And now, in a decent spot again, the Zamazenta able to go for something like a big body press into that Incineroar. Probably not knock it out, but you could possibly get an assist from your Thunder Assist Thunderbolt. And you still, of course, have the Eerie Impulse support to lower the damage from this Whimsicott Moon Blast if you need to. I think it's just an easy Tailwind setup, though. 
It, I mean, surely, yeah, yeah right? Like you want, right? you really want that Tailwind because that helps a lot. It helps you fight the possible, you know, Thunder Waves from this Thunderous. It helps you outspeed the possible Chen Pao that's in the back for Justin after one of these two Pokemon gets knocked out or switches out. Uh, and of course, that is kind of the main thing Whimsicott is there for, the Prankster Tailwind, which we do see get set up <laughs> by Riley. Why? It was on our caster predictions yeah, all along. Uh, exactly. But the Body Press now into the Incineroar. Oh, it is, it is just a one-hit knockout. I mean, it was intimidated. Got to remember, it was Intimidate on the last one, and maybe just a it roll. It was, but Body Press is actually not affected by Intimidate because it is using the, the defense stat. So it might actually just be a damage roll into that Incineroar. Yeah. Roll. That's, that's kind of rough, I think, for Justin in that first game. Maybe that was a, kind of a game changer, not having that Incineroar uh, dispatched earlier on. But for Riley now, loses the Incineroar before it can attack. Again, seeing that Incineroar does not attack before these Amazenta and Tailwind. And importantly, breaking the Focus Sash on Whimsicott with the Thunderbolt. I think that's a really smart play from Justin because now you only need one heavy slam, you know, one strong attack from this Chan Pao to get rid of this Whimsicott, whereas before it, it held onto that Focus Sash for a long time into the first game. But Justin's in a pretty good position right now, too, outside of even just having broken the Focus Sash. You still have those options in the back, and now that this Damazenta is also that Grass Terra, you just have a great way to be able to resist kind of all of the damage that this Maridon could be throwing at you, unless you wanted to lean into specifically the Dragon Pulse. Yes, exactly. The Dragon Pulse is the only thing that can hit this Zamazenta for neutral damage, but if you're using Maridon in electric terrain, I think you want to be using those electric type attacks as much as humanly possible. But that's where this Rillaboom can really come in and throw a wrench into the works, because you're resetting the terrain now, so you've got that grass back in your control, but Riley's been able to play around this so well. Either just kind of continuing to use Fold Switch here to get this Maridon off the field, or making sure that there is an opportunity later to be able to actually actually reset the train for yourself. But staying in for now, because it's going to get that Terra. It's and it is a Terra. ghost Terra. It is. So no electric Terra to boost up these attacks even further. It's just going to be able to deal with the body presses. And the oh, Encore so here smart. from Riley. Exactly. You're locking it into having to do a body press instead of something else, like a heavy slam. As the Electro Drift into the Rillaboom, like, wow. That's still so much damage on top of that, even knowing that that is a grass type and there's no electric terrain. I love that play so much. Ghost type Terra on the ride on is certainly not the most common. Most trainers running the choice specs opt for that electric Terra to further boost the attacks of that Maridon, except now we have the Ghost type, which is a very defensive typing that a lot of trainers opt to use to be immune to fighting a normal type attacks. Comes in very handy here, because encoring Zamazenta into Body Press means it cannot damage this Maridon. I don't, actually, I didn't actually see what Justin tried to do, but if he was opting to go for a Heavy Slam into Whimsicott the prior turn, encoring into Body Slam randomizes the target, or sorry, Body Press randomizes the target. So maybe even getting slightly unlucky there with the Body Press going straight into that Ghost type Maridon. Now you only have the option to do Resisted body press into Whimsicott or immune body press into Maridon, which almost forces Justin to swap it out, which will, again, clear out that defense boost when Justin will no longer, no longer have access to it for the remainder of the game. Well, you still get access to some neutral damage if you are Justin. You get to go for grass type attacks into the Iron Crown. There's now Ghost type, and no you switches, also though. are able to actually hit into the Iron Crown that is now switched onto the field. So, Grassy Glide is able to connect there. And we are going to see a body press head right in that Whimsicott's direction into the Protect. Just wanted to get more damage with that body press. I think you, you have to respect that. Maybe a, probably a 2 KO into the Whimsicott there. Yeah, Zamazenta known for having a very, very big defense stat. Uh, even the resisted body press could do a bunch of damage. But Rillaboom going for a Grassy Glide. Get some nice trip damage into Iron Crown. Unfortunately for Justin, the Rillaboom does not have access to any moves that are not Grass-type moves. It is running Protect over a possible U-turn or even like a high horsepower for some coverage. So this Iron Crown now in a very strong position. Do have to worry about the body presses, but you know that the Zamazenta has Trastalized. It will be neutral into that Tachyon Cutter now, which our, our lovely host David did correct me in between games, is 100% accurate. Not just 100%, is uh, infinite. Like it just doesn't yeah, miss. No, like yeah, it bypasses, it bypasses right. accuracy checks. So it's a very Riley move then in that case. <laughs> yes, it, I was like, gonna say, I'm like, Riley would never run an accurate <laughs> move. I don't know, like if we know our player well enough, but no music and no inaccurate moves, <laughs> just pure bliss. That's what we're high on. Now, resetting the electric terrain for itself, but Justin's one step ahead, wants to remove the Rillaboom as well. And the 
thunderous now, rehitting the field to land the Ziri impulses once again. A great swap because it will resist that Tachyon Cutter and, of course, allow you to go for something like Eerie Impulse into that Maridon or even the Iron Crown. It's useful damage there. And another big body press into Whimsicott. Again, yeah. would be a two at KO there. And Encore does end. So now Riley has to choose what he wants to do with his Whimsicott. Do you want to possibly get another Tailwind up, save it for later? Do you want to Encore into Body Press again to lock it out from damaging the Maridon? But if you do that, you probably lose the Whimsicott to a Body Press. And now you're down to your final two Pokemon, both of which are vulnerable to Eerie Impulse. It's too bad that the Whimsicott missed the Encore onto the Rillaboom. You would have loved to be able to lock it into a Grassy Glide, and it would have felt terrain, like that Whimsicott yeah. would have been able to give a little bit more value in that scenario. But you're right, there is a choice that Riley has to make in this upcoming turn, and it's just going to be a Protect. Protect coming through from Whimsicott does not want to be knocked out by Body Press this turn. Eerie Impulse, though, comes through into the Maridon, will lower its special attack back down to minus two and will be cutting its damage output. But Volt Switch immediately coming through again will be able to reset to bring the Iron Crown back onto the field. Always the Volt Switch. <laughs> And again, it's, it's just like a, it's such a safe move, switch. right? No, it is. It is. Got some damage at the same time. It's very good. So we got the Iron <laughs> Crown now. See, special attack. This time yeah. around, no eerie impulses <laughs> here. But the body press still not able to actually pick up the knockout onto this Whimsicott. But you're kind of hoping that, like, maybe Whimsicott's able to provide value in a different way. This so Iron Crown is still going to be pretty naturally speedy versus the other things that are that are here. Although the Zamazenta, I say that, but it's it's like. Quite fast. It is naturally pretty fast. Often not trained to be super fast, so it relies kind of on that natural speed. And so a Pokemon like Iron Crown with a bunch of training and speed might be able to attack before Zamazenta, but I'm not sure that speed interaction matters too much here. Neither of them are going to be knocking each other out on this turn. It kind of just gives you info for later on when that might come into play. Maybe when both of them are at much lower health and in range for a KO for something, from something like Body Press or Tachyon Cutter. Well, we don't get to see the knockout right now because it is just going to be Maridon. I mean, and this feels so risky in some senses that the Whimsicott's going to leave the field and the Maridon is going to take its place. The Vigiri Impulse, it's just the target's right in front of you with that Iron Crown. To be able to hit it there and the Heavy Slam into the oh. Maridon instead. Not too bad as the Psychic Noise. I, like, that's just not doing nearly enough now after that Eerie Impulse. And especially considering the Maridon took that Heavy Slam pretty well, thanks to an Intimidator 2 from that Incineroar. Not in a super bad spot at all, but one thing to note is that now Maridon is no longer an Electric type. It can be paralyzed by Thunder Wave. If Justin wants to make it paralyzed, uh, make sure that you're possibly outspeeding it, even in Tailwind with your own Shan Pao. That could be a really powerful option here. And even if it switches out into Whimsicott, that means your Thunderous is faster than it and you could taunt it before the Whimsicott could go for something like an Encore or a Tailwind to get that speed up later on. Great point. Really great point, because Justin still hasn't revealed that fourth and final Pokemon to Riley yet. True. But based on what we saw in that game number one, pretty good reasoning behind what could be in that final slot. Eerie Impulse again, this Maridon just like can't catch a break no. <laughs> with any of this. So the Volt Switch, though, so, ah! A KO. Finally. <laughs> Big KO, really, because now the Eerie Impulser is off the field, and so the Maridon gets to come back in and no, it's not going to get any drops and it's not going to get paralyzed. Yep, no speed control left on the field for Justin as Thunderous is finally knocked out. But what this Zamazenta does is a big deal. Body press and Iron Crown, almost enough for a KO, but just barely hangs on. Minus two Psychic Noise, though, really doesn't do too much damage to this Zamazenta, which is still sitting pretty. However, the Eerie Impulse is also no longer an option. If Iron Crown swaps out, that means that Riley's two very strong special attackers will be at neutral special attack for the rest of the game. Chien Pao without, uh, I mean, with the Eerie Impulse, actually, is it still a two-hit knockout with the it, attacking cutter? It might be, but at this point, you have to worry about Sucker Punch, right? The Whimsicott is in yeah, range for yeah. one Body Press or Heavy Slam from Zamazenta, and Iron Crown gets knocked out by Sucker Punch from here. Maridon now being a Ghost type, now weak to Sucker Punch. I don't think either of Riley's attackers can sucker or can attack for the rest of the game as long as Chan Pao is there to Sucker Punch. And you also like, you can't just like protect Iron Crown and try and two, like throw two Moon Blasts into the Chan Pao if you're Riley, because Justin could just Heavy Slam that slot and Whimsicott gets knocked out. Yep. This is a pretty dire situation for uh, Riley right now because Sucker Punch is such a big threat. Well, attacking, oh, this is one way to bypass that, right? Is just switch the Maridon in and hope that it wasn't actually a Sucker Punch selected in that slot, or maybe hope that that is what it is. 
I mean, if, even if it is a sucker punch, right? The the sucker punch will fail yep. into the, the the switching and protecting two slots on Riley's side. But this is kind of just the same situation we were in the prior turn, right? You have a, a strong Pokemon that will be knocked out by sucker punch next to this Whimsicott that can't take an attack from Zamazenta at this point. And especially switching in the Maridon as the electric terrain runs out. Really rough spot for Riley here because again, you just can't attack with Maridon if sucker punch is coming through. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's definitely very tough. But there's also another move that this Chimpow has access to. If you don't want to play the mind game of going for the Sucker Punch, then you could potentially just go for the Throat Chop instead. True. If you expect that this Maridon is going to switch out and that Iron Crown is going to take its place, you're going to get a knockout regardless. Very true. And you can't you know, knock out the Chen Pao before the Whimsicott can attack as well because Whimsicott is slower than Chen Pao. You could double into it with something like the Electro Drift or Volt Switch you know, and the Moon Blast but the Chan Pao will be, will be able to take 1k over regardless. It's really just a matter of if Sucker Punch comes through here, and it does, Maridon will be knocked out. It is, and that means that this is going to be such a big source of damage removed here from Riley. And all you have left is the opportunity of this Iron Crown to try to bring it back, but this Moon Blast, at least it's able to help with this Chan Pao, but not before this final body press from this Zamazenta is going to come through and get the knockout onto the Whimsicott as well. This has been a close set through and through, but it's just the Iron Crown with a sliver of HP for Riley, and it's got two, three Pokemon to work through. <laughs> This is certainly not enough for Riley to take this game. Really well played by Justin, chipping those Pokemon down into that Sucker Punch range. And of course, forcing that Ghost Terra out from the Rhydon really helps out because at that point, you don't care about speed control anymore. Tailwind going up means nothing. Losing your Thunder Wave means nothing. When Sucker Punch is super effective from Chan Pao, nine times out of 10, I'd say you're getting knocked out by it. There are very few things weak to Sucker Punch from Chan Pao that can survive one. And so unfortunately, Maridon and Iron Crown are not two of them. Amazing. Now though, if you're Riley, how do you how do you adjust to this? Because it's been the same lead, it's been the same four for Justin this entire set so far. You have the Eerie Impulsor and the Thunderous. Is that something that you give a little bit more respect to, try to knock it out earlier? Well, the thing is, look, looking at Riley's team, the other options that we haven't seen are Ursula and a Blood Moon, which also just gets Eerie Impulse ad nauseum, and then Urshifu Rapid Strike. It's probably, did they do that in some of the, the contests in the, the Sinnoh I animation? Think so. That'd be kind of fun. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But let's get the run back as we enter into game number three between Riley and Justin. Tied one apiece. Justin running the same leads back, and Riley with the Iron Crown and the Maridon going back to the game plan from. Game number one almost. I kind of like this lead from Riley. It is two very strong special attackers on the field at once. And unfortunately for Justin, you can only eerie impulse one of them at a time. If you do opt to, let's say, double target this Thunderous with you know, the Psychic Noise and an Electro Drift or something like that, two very strong attacks, that means that you're forcing Justin to kind of pick one to eerie impulse and the other gets a full power swing into that Thunderous with the Electric Terrain boost. Makes a lot of sense though, I think, to go after the Maridon just because you've got to do something. Like literally anything about the right. fact that it's still on electric terrain and you don't want to risk just bringing your Rillaboom in. So I think the Eerie Impulse into that slot is probably the priority here. But it's terrestrialization on both sides. Grass Terra for the Zamazenta, and then Ghost Terra once again for Maridon. The Grass Terra really helped against Maridon. You're resisting those strong electric type attacks, but it's not too great into Iron Crown because you do kind of unlock the ability to go for Tachyon Cutter into that slot. Protect coming through from Iron Crown, though. No Tachyon Cutters this turn as Eerie Impulse hits the correct target. The Maridon will now be at minus two special attack, and whenever an attack it chooses to use here, the Dragon Pulse wow. calling the terrestrialization. A really great play, but an also good play from Justin because Bob Body press, I will, doesn't hit the, it hits the, the non-ghost type target, but the eerie impulse was the big deal there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the Zamazenta takes that pretty comfortably. I think it could still take two more realistically before yeah. potentially getting knocked out. Depends on the damage rolls, of course, but that feels good for Justin to be able to have the Zamazenta not take too much damage. And if we're in the same position as last game too now, where the ghost type Maridon is on the field, it can be hit with Thunder Wave. The Iron Crown cannot turn into a ground type, so it will always be vulnerable to Thunder Wave as well. Here we impulse the move of choice there. Both of these strong special attackers now being neutered. That's gonna be great news here for Justin, but another Dragon Pulse here. Still looks like it could be close. Body press in response brings his Iron Crown down so low, but it's just gonna go for the Psychic Noise into the Zamazenta. Ooh. 
That means one more attack from this Maridon will be plenty to knock it out, but it still potentially have to take another Eerie Impulse before it does that. It can, and also there's still the Thunder Wave play. If Thunder Wave goes into the Maridon, it will be paralyzed, have its speed halved, and we saw the Zamazenta act before Iron Crown. Not going to happen this turn, though, because Justin opts to swap out the Zamazenta, keep it safe for another day. Rillaboom hits the field and will cancel out that electric terrain. Yeah, so another way to limit the damage output of this Maridon. One thing, though, about that Zamazenta, it doesn't get that defense boost back. So as you called out in that game number one, we actually get the chance to see it play out because it's still alive in this game three and switching off the field. The Dragon Pulse to cover for that switch. That's I mean, still so much. nothing wants to come into that slot. Like everything takes neutral damage to that. Nice play there with the Thunderbolt. You get some damage onto Maridon. One more Eerie Impulse. You start to kind of hit some diminishing returns there. And Iron Crown protecting means that if you would try to fire a Thunderbolt into that slot, it would have failed. Not done any damage at all. So Justin still makes some ground with that Thunderbolt into Maridon. Possibly puts Maridon in range for an attack from this Rollaboom. Maybe Woodhammer is not enough to win it KO it at full HP, but now it's certainly in range, I'd imagine, with the Grassy Terrain and the Miracle Seed boost. And of course, Iron Crown still vulnerable to something like a Thunderbolt from the Thunderous. It did just protect, so it has the possibility to be faked out on this turn from Merlaboom as well. It does, but it's just going to be the Incineroar. So a good way to cover for this, which we kind of get a chance to maybe see what that play was that you were talking about pay off here. It would have, though, if oh, it wasn't yeah. Incineroar switching in as a dark type. So it's not going to be affected by this prankster thunder wave. Uh, so unfortunately, not going to get those speed drops that Justin was hoping for. But the Rillaboom wanted to be able to follow that up into the Maridon with this Woodhammer. And Cinderwood, the perfect choice to bring in, not even just to lower the attack output of this Rillaboom by one stage, but also just take that Woodhammer. And of course, no Thunder Wave coming through there means that Iron Crown and Incineroar are still on the field. Iron Crown actually very much benefiting from the grassy terrain that Justin set up. We were in a position where one Thunderbolt might have been able to knock it out, but from this range, I think those couple turns of grassy terrain recovery have put it such that it can no longer be knocked out by one Thunderbolt. You have to target it with something else uh, or with both Pokemon at the same time. And now that Incineroar has hit the field, it's in such a strong position, able to eat up that Thunder Wave and with immunity because it is a dark type and prankster moves do not work. And of course, now you threaten with a fake out into Rillaboom or even a strong attack like a knockoff or a Flare Blitz. Yeah, so Rillaboom just protecting. That is kind of one of the nice benefits of being able to hold a different item to what we usually see on the Rillaboom, like an Assault Fest, that you do get access to protect. Uh, so kind of nice there. But the U-turn from the Incineroar, having Assault Fest means that you do have access to a couple more coverage options than we would usually see on an Incineroar. And on a team like this, when you also have Volt Switch available from the Maridon, it's a great way to get that Incineroar in as your defensive switch and out again so that you can get this Maridon to have that terrain control. Terrain control back up means that the speed on Iron Crown will now be activated by yeah, the Quark Drive. there we go. Which actually might be a big deal if the Zamazenta comes back in. It was pretty low on HP. Even though Iron Crown is a minus two special attack, it might still be able to get a KO into it thanks to that speed boost now able to act before the Zamazenta. And of course, the Rillaboom still at low HP, but the Electric Terrain coming back up means that Grassy Glide is no longer a priority move. You will have to switch it out if you want these terrain control in your favor again. Or you also still have Eerie Impulse control well, you have some Thunder Wave options here. Eerie Impulse now lowers that Maridon's attack again, but I feel like the important thing is just trying to get the knockout here. But because this Iron Crown does have that speed and you can't go for the priority Grassy Glides either, this Rillaboom gets knocked out before it's able to go for a big wood hammer. It so huge, is. huge knockout with that speed boost. It really is. And now Maridon has the option to go for a Volt Switch here. It did not get paralyzed, thankfully. So it has the option to come back in, still be at full speed, and of course, reset all these Eerie Impulse drops. Even though we have seen so many Eerie Impulses coming out from the Slenderous, so many of them just haven't stuck because Riley is very willing to switch out his Pokemon, either with the pivot moves like Volt Switch or just hard switching into something else like this Incineroar. Ooh, what a tough call to make, though. This Chen Pao, the fourth and final for Justin, finally makes an appearance in this game. But Riley actually has yet to reveal what that fourth one is. 
Whimsicott's. That's true. It might be that Whimsicott, but I think at this point, you'd imagine Whimsicott have turned. probably hits the field sooner, typically, when you're using Whimsicott to get that speed control. Exactly. So it could be something like that Urshifu to get some more damage. Even the Ursaluna Blood Moon, if the Thunderous is the last thing remaining for Justin, then Ursaluna just comes in and can't take damage from it at all. So that might explain why Riley's been much more keen to target the things next to the Thunderous, not having to worry about Thunderous with that Blood Moon later on. This Chen Pao now does have its Focus Ash intact. Iron Crown, Shirley, and Sucker Punch range. And of course, like we mentioned, Maridon being a ghost type is very vulnerable to that Sucker Punch. So if, if Riley doesn't have a way to deal with this Chan Pao before it can fire these Sucker Punches off, he might still be in a rough position. Well, the Protect is going to deny one Sucker Punch here. So Chan Pao not able to actually do any damage into the Iron Crown. But we have finally get a chance to see Thunders do something a little bit different. Thunderbolt just chipping away at this Incineroar as the Flare Blitz Ooh. into that slot. What a great pickup of a KO. Maybe it isn't that Blood Moon that could be in the back there. You even might want to consider that you take out the Chan Pao instead because right. it would be packing an Icicle Crash. I think even if it is that Blood Moon, I like that play a lot too because thanks to the speed boost from Quark Drive, your Iron Crown is the fastest thing on the field. You've now removed the Eerie Impulse threat, which has been really a, a, an obnoxious like part of Justin's team for Riley in this match. And now your Iron Crown, I think even that minus two special attack we saw in a previous game, is able to KO Chan Pao through the Focus Sash. And so you have to worry about Iron Crown. Even though it's not minus two special attack, you can't just leave it alone because it is able to take this KO, which means that Justin has to split his attention between the two Pokemon on Riley's side of the field instead of taking an easier route and, you know, maybe focusing on one thing because the other Pokemon is a little bit crippled. Covering for the option, though, that this Ghost-type Maridon could switch back in, not wanting to go for the Body Press. So you're able to at least do a little bit of damage knowing that, yeah, that is actually what happened here. But the Sucker Punch, oh, big call. KO onto the Iron Crown. And that's going to be a huge Pokemon, very speedy. Now, Riley can't get access to that. Smart Heavy Slam, too. There is no loss of damage into this Maridon because the Incineroar swapped out into the Ghost-type. Really nice play for Justin to cover the possibility of that Pokemon becoming a Ghost-type in front of that Zamazenta and no body press whiffing into it. That means that Maridon is now certainly in Sucker Punch range, even though it might get intimidated later on. But Urshifu comes in. This is a Choice Scarf Urshifu. No, it's Mystic Water. Justin has a Choice Scarf one, so Mystic Water Urshifu comes in. And that means that Justin has speed advantage. If Maridon stays on the field and attacks, it will get Sucker Punched. Zamazenta, though, does not have a defense boost. Body press, unlikely to do a huge chunk of damage to it. I don't know if a combination of Sacred Sword and Body Press... No, it's not even Sacred Sword. This, this Urshifu, like, really can't touch this Chan Pao at all, in Mary. No. Uh, it's it's going to be uh, a tough one, I think. Yeah. Uh, for, for the Urshifu, um, I mean... I think the, the only thing that I would think about is just the fact that maybe you even just go for the close combat. You, I mean, you can close combat. The, is, the issue is, I don't know that Justin has a, a way to damage this Urshifu anymore. The Surging Strikes is enough to KO through this Focus Sash often. And even this Volt Switch comes out before the Chan Pao can attack. These two Pokemon are at their neutral speed states, and that might have possibly been a speed tie. I mean, they've taken off the headsets already. I think they know Maridon is just going to end up taking the pivot. They're shaking hands already. So the, the job has been done. <laughs> Even though the game isn't technically ended yet, I think they both realize that that is a pretty clear win yeah. for Riley in this state, uh, just because.